When talking about Japanese Buddhist temples, you may think of Kiyomizu Dera in Kyoto, Totaiji in Nara. Well, the famous ones they are listed as World Heritage Sites. But here are some real but sad facts about Buddhist temples in Japan. While it is surprising that there are actually more Buddhist temples than convenience stores, up to a quarter of these temples are without owners and many of them are left abandoned. Like the Akiya problem, where there are more and more abandoned houses in the countryside, Buddhist temples are facing the same problem. And really, in a society with continuously decreasing population, it is an inevitable issue that needs to be tackled and solved as early as possible. Anyway, today I'm going to show you one of these abandoned Buddhist temples. It is only a few minutes' walk from the Gojo Sakal slope in the Higashiyama area of Kyoto City. This is actually a part of the property as well, this Jizo temple. And there we have a bigger temple, which is where we're going to see today. Super excited. Take a look at the surrounding first. Here on the side is a, a different building, not the main Buddhist temple, but uh, we'll get to see that as well. But look at these pillar. These are the real stuff that you see in Buddhist temples. I really like these deck outside of the tatami rooms and the temple one especially makes it feel like a miniature version of Kiyomizu temple or something that you have a stage, your own private stage here Look at these again. Wow. All right, then let's actually see what it looks inside the Buddhist temple. Oh. Whew, it's huge. Oh my goodness. I guess this was used as the ceremonies, praying spots. Uh, I was told this was, uh, this temple doesn't have any graveyards, so I don't know where it has the income, but uh, maybe that's one of the reason that this temple is being sold because um, the owner probably just doesn't have the money to maintain such a place like this. Um, so it's quite simple. It's uh, eight tatami mats per square and there's like six squares. And that's the overall, that's the overall area of this Buddhist temple. These are probably leftovers from the temple, I don't know if you can actually get this by buying this house or buying this temple, but if they're here, I guess they're part of the property. And okay, this is, I guess this is gotta be the most, most expensive item 
in this temple huge um, I don't know how tall but two meters I guess from the ground uh, I heard even like a typical one in regular households it's cost like uh, a few million yen one or two million yen so something like this I would imagine it to be very very expensive holy After doing some research, I learned that there are two main types of Buddhist temples in Japan. The Ekotera and the Kitodera temples. Their main difference would be having a Danka or not. Having a Danka means that people have their ancestors' tombs looked after by the temple. Ekotera is the one with Danka or congressions. It holds memorial service for the dead. Kitodera, on the other hand, is the one without Danka and it prays for the profit and good fortune of the living. So I think this particular Buddhist temple that I'm in now is a Kitodera temple. And in this corner, I have no idea what it's used for. For some sort of display. Now it's empty, but it can be used for some, you know, furnitures, whatever decorations you put here. Let's take another look of this temple from this angle, this corner. And let's see the outside. If I can get this to open. Ah, not this one. Let's try this one. I hope one of it opens. No, it doesn't. It doesn't open. Ah, uh, uh, the water leaking is pretty bad, though. Probably needs a lot of work before somebody can actually live or make this place into something else. Compared to a typical house, the ceiling is very tall. Um, here is about 180, I think, so you know, it must be over 2 meters where the ceiling is. I think there are some parts of the temple that I haven't seen in the back. Let's just go check it out. Okay, wow, this is the back of the altar, I think. There's some pen painting. I'm not so sure what it's about. But okay, this is the back. Again, the ceiling is very tall, very high. And uh, because there are windows everywhere, it's really bright, except this corner where it's all blocked. Uh, from here, you can see the outside. I guess that's it for the back but these are really thick pillar is one of the biggest I think I mean if you go see like a typical famous war heritage temple it's probably a lot bigger than this but compared to a typical house this is like way bigger than you could imagine and it goes all the way up there okay just want to add some additional information about this temple first this was actually a uh, madera which means it was used by none and there were no monks here. While well, I don't have the specific date, this temple was likely built before 1950 with a traditional construction method like Machia or Kaminka. 
It means that the entire wooden structure of the temple merely rests on top of individual stone bases. Lastly, since this temple is no longer a religious facility, whoever buys the place can use it as they like, a home, a place for yoga, meditation, or a guest house for travelers. I hope you're enjoying the video so far because the main temple was only one of the buildings that sits on the premise of this property. There is actually another residential building that we are going to see now. Let's go see the other building that's not a temple, but probably was used as a residential area for the monks or whoever managing the place. So this building is also a typical Japanese style house but I think this is built a little bit later so the feeling is a bit more Showa compared to the actual temple and uh, feels more livable I mean you have the kitchen it's not the most clean and modern kitchen but well we have the Basin here as well. So I guess until recently this place was still occupied by people and then it's not run down or anything and you don't have any any major problem that you have to fix. I don't know about termites but uh, here is a tiny Washroom. Here is the toilet. It's quite big and it has like the, you know, support for people who are older or disabled. Oh, here we go, you have some kind of kid space. Maybe they used to hold like Sunday school or you know something for the kids around this area. I'm not so sure. Okay. Well this is broken. But you can see the temple very nicely from here. I get a very good shot of the temple from this broken glass. Okay. This building is actually connected to the actual temple, so you have this kind of a hallway outside. Ooh. Again, this Buddhist temple is Astonishing. And this is the end of this building, and there is sort of a garden at the end. But uh, let's see how it looks like. Okay, not the most beautiful garden, but uh, you have something some greeneries I think that's the temple over there the edge of the temple oh there we go there's another really good fitting nice 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 Honestly, I don't see anyone buying this temple anytime soon as it costs over 2 million US dollars. But I did find a temple with similar size in Kanazawa city that's only like 7 or 8 times cheaper. Alright, I hope you liked this episode. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye!